I am Phil Brock. This is Brock and your block. And today we're playing with some meatballs and some great red sauce on Ocean Avenue in Santa Monica. You'll find out where we are in a minute. So I'm wearing my red tablecloth shirt today because we're in a red tablecloth restaurant on Ocean Avenue in Santa Monica. And I'm staying with the owner of Bruno's. And I understand it's your 30th anniversary. Right. Now, you are? Pantaleone Bruno. Ah, Bruno's your last name. Correct. But everyone calls you Bruno. Bruno, yes. Okay. So it's your 30th anniversary of owning this restaurant on Ocean Avenue in Santa Monica. I presume it's an Italian restaurant. It is. And Southern Italian restaurant. And where are you from in Italy? I'm uh, from around Naples. Okay. Yeah. So your food is Naples based? Yes, consistent Southern Italian food. Yeah. And as we would say, an old New York looking Italian red tablecloth restaurant. Everybody say that, but I've never been in New York eating a restaurant over there. But all New Yorkers, they say, oh my God, this is like a New York place, you know? Well, so you're unique in Santa Monica, though, which is good. Well, I guess so. So tell me a little bit. You've lasted 30 years on Ocean Avenue, and you're the only reasonably priced, inexpensive family restaurant left on Ocean Avenue. Now, across the street from you is historic Shea Jays, but here, you're the restaurant for people who live here. Yes, and also tourists. There's a lot of tourists. I get a lot of people. They also come back from one year to next year. They keep on coming back. So there's also tourists. And also locals, which a little by little, little by little, they kind of disappear because, you know, I guess the rent get more too expensive or, you know, stuff like and that. Traffic. And it's, traffic. It's traffic. It's hard. As yeah. much as you get millions of people down here in the summer, it's yeah. hard for the people who live here to get here. That is correct, yes. And, you know, I, I talk a lot on this show about fabric and thread of the community. Well, in this case, it's red thread and green thread for Italy. And, but it is also, this restaurant is part of the fabric of the city. Our new administration, they're, they're raging against immigrants. And, you know, my grandmother came through Ellis Island in 1923 from Europe. And all of us yeah. are immigrants here. Right. Why did you come to America? Well, I actually left Italy when I was 15. Uh, I went to Belgium, and then from there I went back to Italy, and then I came to the United States here. You know, there was a, an uncle here. He used to have a Villa Capri in Hollywood, very, very famous restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so um, he sponsored me. I came over here. Then when I got here, he passed away. And so then I went to work uh, for another uncle of mine, Tony's Pizza in Farms Market. And then from there, different restaurants until, you know, my dream was to have my own little restaurant. Even though I work to a fancy restaurants, my dream was always like to have a family restaurant. I don't like to see like where is like a statue in a restaurant. I want everybody to feel comfortable, dress casual, you know, and that's, that was my dream. Just are, are, you, are you happy you ended up in America in Santa Monica? I wouldn't say happy, I would say extremely happy. I mean, you know, I. I won't change my life for, for anything else. You know, I'm happy. I, I feel like I've fulfilled my life. I, I'm happy. Beat it. And you, and you left yeah. Italy at 15. Yeah. I, you know, when I was a sophomore at Samoai, at 15, I was barely able to go around the block by myself. That's impressive. Yeah, it's, it was good for me because going to Belgium, you know, now I can speak French, I can speak Spanish, I can speak English. Italian in all those languages and you know I get a lot of tourists here and speak all those languages they feel real comfortable feel like wait somebody speaks that language you know I feel like uh, they feel at home too you know let's go this way you know so do you feel you're part of this community definitely yes I love Santa Monica more than anything the people are great people great customers I won't change for another job ever and were you, did you own a restaurant before Bruno's? No, worked many different restaurants, but that's the only place I only had. Only this place, that's it. How many years were you in Los Angeles before you opened Bruno's? Well, I came in uh, 1975. Now, you know. So you've outlasted now a lot of restaurants you worked at. Yes, I did, yeah. And you've outlasted restaurants in Santa Monica because, you know, it's one of the toughest businesses you can be in. So if your restaurant can last even a decade 
It's a miracle. There's three or four or five restaurants in L.A. that have lasted a half century or more. But you're on your way. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, dedication. You got to be here every day and a lot of things. You know, you can just go and buy everything. So, you know, you start making certain things yourself, like I make a homemade bread, homemade pizza mm -hmm. dough, some homemade pasta, stuff like this. So this saves a little bit. I go do my own shopping, so I can save mm -hmm. money. So you buy a lot of your own products? Yes, I do. And, you know, every single time I've come to this restaurant over the years, you're always in here. Do you get a day off? Uh, I get hours off, which hours plus hours, put 24 hours to get, you got a day off, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, because you're dedicated, I mean, you are in this restaurant. You know, I need to work myself too, because like I said, you know, I got to save money, so, you know, I can offer a cheaper price, you know, good quality food. You have a family? Yeah, I got a wife and a kid. Do they eat only Italian food, or do they hate Italian food now? Oh, um... Uh, my son, he loves Italian food. Every day he comes from school, uh, Samo High year. Oh, he's a Samo High yes. student. What year? Uh, the last year. Senior. Senior, senior, yeah. So uh, right after Wait. school, is dish pasta for him right away. Very good. I'm president of the Samo High Alumni Association, so I do a lot of different things in Santa Monica, so I'm always happy that someone's going to the high school I went to All right. as well. That's good. Now, you serve pizza and pastas and... You have beer chicken and wine, and veal, yeah. chicken and veal. Yes. So there, you're a full service yes. restaurant, and you're open lunch and dinner. Yes, 11:30 to 10:30. I know you have an outdoor patio. Yes, small patio. And something that's very rare in Santa Monica, he has free parking. Now, don't tell anyone he has free parking. Very small parking, though. Don't count on the parking because it's full most of the time. So we're outside, it's a beautiful Santa Monica day, and I just realized you have a $100 a meal view out here at the picnic tables in the patio, because look at this. We've got the roller coaster, we've got the ocean in the distance. You know, I've never sat out here. From now on, oh, yeah. when I come here, I want to reserve that table on the patio. And it'll be $100 for the meal, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you just uh, said you worked on creating some new box planters and, and making your patio look nicer. But you just told me something off camera. You said when you were growing up, when you were a kid, you were a farmer. Right. Uh, well, you know, by Naples over there, the soil is very good. You can grow a lot of things one next to each other. One thing is finished growing. The other one already started uh, growing. And so uh, we used to do everything, like potato, tomato, onions, uh, fruits. Uh, I used, we used to have a cow, or a pig, and stuff like that. So we used to make our own cheese, uh, you name it, our own pasta, our own made bread, you know. We're a family of eight kids, so we used to do everything there. So this is like uh, the, my cooking is uh, reflects what I used to do there. So your parents cooking? My mother. And you know how to really grab everything from yeah. the soil, so you know when right. you see good produce? Right, definitely. I know that. And uh, I know how to make, uh, you know, olive oil, stuff like this, and I used to make my own so I know what so you could press olive oil very cool well we used to go to a place to, for the press that well, they had a press that used to make the oil for us but we had to bring the olives ah. and, uh, so that's very cool that's good to we know to make our homemade wine that's very important homemade now wine. wait a minute now I'm gonna stop and stay yeah. closer to you I want to hear about the homemade wine I like that so you had grape you had uh, yeah. Yeah, some actually, vines as well right. actually I still make homemade wine here I go pick my own grapes and make homemade wine. We've got 30 years in this month. Yeah. Are you going for 50? Uh, maybe 100. There you go, I like that. Is there a secret menu I should know about? This is not a real secret menu. You know, I cook only like um, as old fashioned as I can. You know, I don't like these new ideas of cooking. I like uh, uh, big portions. You know, I try to buy product. Uh, from Italy, like the tomatoes from Italy, the pasta from Italy, because uh, no offense, but I haven't found a good American pasta yet. So, you know, one thing that's in, I, I've always thought was important for restaurants, if the owner is on premises, there is quality control, and there is an attention to detail. And I love going to restaurants where the owner and the manager, where I walk in and they know me. I always feel like I'm walking into someone's living room rather than just someone's restaurant. Yeah. 
thank you for feeling that way. <laughs> and you're one of those places in Santa Monica. You're one of the few left. And, you know, in Santa Monica, now you're south of the Santa Monica Pier, across from Santa Monica's Tongva Park, which I helped work on when I was a Recreation and Parks Commissioner. And you're across from Shea J, which is another legend in Santa Monica. In terms of serving our community, our Santa Monica. To accommodate, sometimes people want something different, you know, I'll do a different. So I you'll do some time. creations then, that's good. That's so well, fun. see, I didn't know if that, I'll have to know that. If I got the time and, you know, and whatever the, the ingredients you need, I'll certainly do it, you know. And the most expensive item on your menu? It's the bill. I buy the old big leg, I got a carve and pound and all that. That's a lot. So, so you're a chef and you're a butcher? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And you are a sauce maker. And I know that well, your staff stay. Your yeah, staff have yeah. been here for years. Yeah, I got uh, uh, one cook whose name is Eduardo. He's been here like uh, almost all 30 years. Wow. Then we got a Grow America. She's been here like uh, 20 years, you know, so the staff stays here a long time. So yeah. that means they like the restaurant. They may like you. They also feel that it's a great place to work. Yeah. And you're living a majority of your life here in this restaurant. Yeah, we treat each other like, you know, we, we family. What's your favorite pizza? Sausage, pepperoni, mushrooms. Your least favorite pizza? Pineapple. Ah, uh, pineapple doesn't belong in pizza. No, no, I don't think so. That's sort of sacrilege. I, I'm surprised the Pope hasn't come out with an edict against it. You're right. I hope you have 30 more years here. Well, thank you. And we're happy we came in today, Bruno, because you're always a smiling, busy presence in this restaurant. We love the Red Booths. We love this restaurant. So all of you, Bruno's, Ocean Avenue, Santa Monica, 30 years old this year. For Brock and Your Block, I'm Phil Brock. We'll see you next time. <laughs>